Now, Pi Ramses is the ancient Ramesside capital in the north, in the delta, in Egypt, that lasted from about 11, or excuse me, 1280 to 1150 or 1130. There's a little wiggle room there, which gives it a very, mind, a very short window of use. In the Bible, I believe it is synced up with the reference in Exodus 111, where it says the Israelites built the store cities, Pithom and Ramses. So Ramses in Exodus 111 is Pi Ramses in Egyptian texts. Now, because this site has such a short window of use, it's a very interesting reference to trying to understand the Exodus account and its setting, namely during that very short window, only about 150 years. So what gives? Well, the branch that Pi Ramses was built on, the branch of the Nile, dried up. It's called the Bubastite branch, and that caused the lower reaches of the Nile, that silted up, and that caused the lower reaches of that branch of the Nile to dry up, which caused the city to no longer be a splendid Ramesside capital on the Nile. Now it's on a dried up branch of it, and so they moved the blocks mostly to Tanis to the north. Now, recent archaeology, in fact, even go back to the uh, 20th century, but archaeology has confirmed that this is actually to be found at the modern site of Kantir, where they have uncovered a host of really interesting archaeological data. There are almost no features, and when archaeologists speak of features, we usually mean something that can't move. So like a monumental uh, architecture, a, a gate, something like a palace, or things like that. At Kantir, we really only have the foundations of those buildings because so many of the stones were reused. Instead, what we have then at Kantir are artifacts and small finds, and they are found in remarkable quantities, and many of them are associated with stables. They think we have a stable force large enough to accommodate 460 horses at Kantir. So this is a major military operation that's based out of this Ramesside capital. Associated small finds are daggers, lances, arrowheads, scales of the type that they would sew into chest armor, essentially, and maybe most interesting, a stone mold, which they would use to make the rims, the metal rims, for their shields. And you can see depictions of these uh, from the Battle of Kadesh. They're actually Hittite te technology that the Egyptians are borrowing, and they're making it at these workshops at, at Kantir. Now, magnetometry surveys show that the site is probably up to about 20 square kilometers, so it's a pretty massive site by ancient standards. And this has been well researched by a number of Egyptologists going all the way back to Mahmoud Hamza and Labib Habashi and Shatata Adam, up to Edgar Push and his German team in the early 2000s, and now under the direction of UCL Qatar, who are continuing to do the work there. So this is now fully confirmed as Pi Ramses, and it has been confirmed that way actually for quite a while because the very first excavations there by Hamza found hieratic ostracon which mentioned the name Pi Ramses. Now that just means hieratic is like cursive hieroglyphs, like the handwriting version. And this confirms that the site was actually Pi Ramses. It's every archeologist's dreams to actually find the name of the site on the site most of the time. It's luck of the draw, really. So this is a really important site. It helps us understand the date of the Exodus for those who hold to historical Exodus. Uh, the general idea being they must have been in Egypt around that time or the reference would be added way later, at which point it loses its sort of historical impact. So for someone like me, this fits a late date Exodus quite well and is the key point for that discussion. Thanks. Thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and sign up for our digital newsletter so that you can stay up to date on everything from the world of biblical archaeology. And if you would like to see more, why not check out one of the videos on your screen right now?